Today we are having the 38th lecture. In the last class we had started with discussion about phase lock loop which is strictly speaking a frequency lock loop and discuss some of the applications at the end. Today we will go into further details about the design of this so called PLL or FLL. So, we had seen that frequency follower is a phase follower. We had actually earlier the true PLL having a VCP that was getting replaced by a VCO which is an independent oscillator controlled by a control voltage in the loop itself. Okay. So, the omega i is the input and we can consider this in terms of uh, initially when this signal is not applied as having a VCQ here which corresponds to an omega naught Q here and this being connected to nothing this PLL has now a free running frequency this is called the free running frequency which can be set by adjusting the VCO parameters. So, that changes both KVCO which is called the sensitivity of the VCO okay, which is nothing but delta omega naught by delta V C. So, the V C Q makes this free run at omega naught Q and nothing comes out of this low pass filter of even if there is a feed through. Okay. So, output remains continues to remain at V C Q and at which point if one now feeds uh, an input here corresponding to omega i equal to omega naught q. Again nothing should happen however, this has a component of twice omega naught q at that point and a DC component. So, the DC component corresponds to cos phi because there is likely to be a phase shift of phi between this component and this component. So, that cos phi should be also going to 0. So, that V c remains at V c q and therefore, the phase shift gets adjusted automatically to pi by 2. So, phi becomes equal to pi by 2 for this. So, it is now phase locked okay, to pi by 2. So, a phase follower frequency follower is naturally a phase follower. The phase detector does not know whether it is the frequency that is varying or the phase that is changing. Right? So, it just follows the phase delta phi naught by delta phi i therefore, is equal to 1 by 1 plus 1 over loop gain and the loop gain is made up of these components it has a DC component which is KPD then KA okay, and KVCO that is what is called DC loop gain okay. and then it has a component here corresponding to low pass filter. So, the actual loop gain is nothing but GLO which is KPD KCVCO KA divided by this transfer function 1 plus S by omega LP where omega LP is equal to 1 by RC. So, if you substitute this as 1 over GL here you get S by GL naught plus S squared by GL naught omega LP. So, this is what is called the natural frequency squared. 
of the system and this is what is called omega n into q okay and therefore the uh, omega n into q okay will be equated to gl naught so we have this q equal to root of gl naught by omega lp for this omega n being equal to square root of gl naught into omega lp so these are the uh, equations governing the phase following action delta phi naught by delta phi i strictly should be equal to 1 if these components do not contribute much. That means actually S equal to J omega here corresponds to the uh, dynamics of the phase lock loop. Okay. The static characteristic just says output phase follows the input phase output frequency is equal to input frequency. That means if S equal to J omega is substituted in this what does omega correspond to? Omega corresponds to the rate of change of frequency, right? the frequency of the change in frequency. So, frequency of the change in frequency is the same as the frequency of the change in phase. So, it is that omega that is to be put here. So, this is something that we should uh, strictly understand very well. So, once the phase locking phenomenon is understood as a linear system like this, it the S equal to J omega corresponds to the frequency of the change in frequency. Okay, lock range of this system is actually a static characteristic where we had change the uh, omega incoming okay starting from omega not q and if you plot v c it will be initially at v c q at this point corresponding to omega not q and thereafter it is going to change on either side this way this way right keep on changing this way right. So, the VCQ is going to change from VCQ to VC of corresponding value depending upon how far away from omega naught Q omega i is this way or that way and at one point of time it goes out of log. Again we start with omega equal to omega naught Q go towards this range and it stops at this point right and comes back to the free running frequency. So, this range where it goes out of lock okay on the either side of omega naught q is called the lock range and that lock range is governed by the fact that the phase shift if starts with pi by 2 here right it goes on all the way up to let us say 0 on one side and pi on the other side. So, that is uh, the lock range 0 to pi around pi by 2 is the lock range thereafter it goes out of log if the condition is that the amplifier should not go to saturation and the uh, VCO should fu uh, function in this range satisfactorily as a linear VCO. So, that is the static characteristic of the PLL and again if we now do not start from omega equal to 0 and go on, on either side 
but start with omega i at a low frequency end or high frequency end then we had invented that omega i minus omega naught q itself is a component which is much greater than omega L p. So, nothing happens at the output of the low pass filter nothing comes out and therefore there is no locking taking place. So, when you come this way right if this is omega i equal to omega naught q one has to come pretty close to omega naught q in order to get into the locking uh, mechanism right. So, it just has to come pretty close from here all the way up to this and then it gets locked then it follows this slope which is nothing but is nothing but omega i minus omega naught q divided by kvco. So, this is 1 over kvco it can go on all the way up to this come down. So, on this side it can go up to the lock range. So, this is the lock range this is called the capture range. Same thing happens when omega naught q minus omega i or uh, this is what happens when omega i minus uh, uh, omega naught q this is what happens when omega naught q minus omega i is much greater than omega L p. On the other side when omega i minus omega naught q is much greater than omega L p uh, what happens is okay the other one comes like this gets captured and goes on like this all the way up to this and the sort of lock on this side. So, this range is the capture range it is always less than the lock range it can be controlled by the low pass filter and we had seen how capture range can be roughly got in terms of an equation which is delta omega c equal to delta omega l by square root of 1 plus delta omega c by omega l p whole square. So, this is approximated under this situation if delta omega c by the omega l p is much greater than 1 this 1 can be neglected and capture range is square root of log range into omega l p. So, otherwise you have to solve this quadratic equation to get the capture range. Next we have designed a PLL and simulated its uh, lock range capture range and its characteristic and used it for FM detection. So, let us see how it can be understood. The PLL designed has a VCO with sensitivity equal to 100 hertz per volt around a quotient frequency of 1000 this is for just demonstration. Amplitude of the output square wave sine wave it can be either square wave or sine wave accordingly the uh, lock range will change. The VCO is uh, the if it is a square wave or a sine wave the VCO output is taken to be 10 volts. The input to the PLL is a square wave or sine wave of amplitude 5 volts we will do it for both uh, types of waveforms. The phase detector is a multiplier V x V y by 10 followed by a low pass filter with R equal to 1 k and C equal to 1 microfarad. This is the complete uh, PLL circuit. So, we have fixed all the parameters of the PLL. So, G L O is nothing but that is DC loop gain is K V C O K P D K. Here we have not put an amplifier. So, uh, the uh, K A is 1. So, low pass filter output is directly connected to the V C O. So, K A is equal to 1 this is equal to 1 and K V C O we have taken 100 hertz per volt. K P D is nothing but it is uh, uh, Vp that is V average in the case of a multiplier 
and low pass filter V average was VP, VP dash, VP is the input, peak for our sine wave, peak of the sine wave, VP dash is the output of the VCO, VP, VP dash by 20 cos phi. So, uh, a delta V average by delta phi is the K uh, PD. So, that K P D is minus V P V P dash by 20 sin phi. So, we are investigating at omega equal to omega naught q to start with. So, phi is pi by 2 that we know. So, at that sin pi by 2 is um, that is uh, this particular thing is uh, delta V average sin pi by 2 is 0 and therefore, this um, value of uh, V average is going to be uh, 0 uh, that is sin pi by 2 is 1 and cos phi is mm, uh, 0. So, the value of the average is 0 and sin phi is 1 and therefore, this is minus Vp Vp dash by 20. Which in our case this Vp being uh, 5 volts okay into Vp dash being uh, 10 volts by 20 is 2.5 volts per radians. So, with these values getting substituted we have here minus 200 pi into 2.5 equal to minus 500 pi it is indicating that is negative feedback. So, GLO into pi by 2 is the lock range which is 500 pi into pi by 2 which is roughly 2500 radians per second or plus minus 393 around 1000 hertz which is going to give you a lock range of 1393 hertz to 607 hertz. So, this is the case only if the loop gain is maintained very large in that range then the error is going to be very small okay and therefore, it is going to be within this range in common practice because if it is um, sin phi that is the characteristic instead of linear phase detection right. Linear phase detector we had seen okay will be just the sine wave is converted to square and then applied to the multiplier. Then this value of uh, K P D is maintained throughout the range. However, uh, if it is uh, just a sine wave okay uh, that is V average is a cos wave and this is a sine wave okay. So, that is the uh, waveform for the uh, phase detection I think we have to draw it more carefully. So, that is the sine wave. So, this particular thing is going to be the case okay only around this region of operation very small region we can take for granted that K P D is constant as uh, it nears 0 or pi it goes towards 0. So, most of the time if the lock range is computed with this value it is valid only for a short range within this. So, it is much less than this as far as the uh, phase detector which is non-linear is concerned. With a linear phase detector it can be almost reached fully okay. And if you now substitute for the capture range it is nothing but log range divided by this you get this and solving this equation quadratic equation one obtains a capture range very nearly equal to 1200 radians per second here. And delta phi naught by delta phi i is omega naught by omega i which is 1 by 1 plus s by g l naught okay which is uh, 500 pi 
S squared by G L naught omega L P which is 500 pi into 1000 radians per second. So, omega n of this system which has been now designed comes out to be 1414 radians per second and Q is 1.414. Let us look at this system as a sort of low pass filter now. It is the same characteristic as the low pass filter ok. So, as far as S is concerned right it is defining the dynamics of this system. That means, I must now have uh, uh, for example, a step input in phase or a step change in frequency. That means, a frequency state set change suddenly from one value to another at the input. So, this is omega i initial ok which may be omega i uh, equal to omega naught q to omega i which is different from omega naught q. So, that is a step change in frequency it is equivalent to finding the step response of this. So, what should happen is if you see the uh, control voltage it will have to change suddenly from V c q to any value of V c as a step strictly, but because of this nature that it is going to be changing in this manner. So, this is the process of capture of one frequency starting from uh, another frequency. This is a step change in frequency and this should be the characteristic if it is a second order and the number of such peaks which can be counted give the value of q ok. As ringing frequency corresponds to a close uh, thing for omega n. Strictly speaking it is omega n the square root of 1 minus 1 by 2 q square. This we had already uh, understood when we discuss passive network and low pass filters second order low pass. Same characteristic exists for the PLL also. So, let us look at that. So, I have just applied a step input in frequency. So, the frequency at the input has changed suddenly ok from one value to another. So, what happens here is the DC value is going to change at the input of the VCO ok from one value to another. So, this is the way and you can see this particular thing peaking like this. This is nothing but the ripple which is still unfiltered this corresponds to 2 omega i component. So, that unfiltered 2 omega i component still exists, but the DC component you can trace here is something that is well understood in terms of the uh, filter fu uh, function. Now, it is applicable equally well in the case of uh, the PLL ok. So, this is called the step response of the PLL, but is step change in frequency at the input of the PLL and this change that is observed ok is clearly observed at the input of the uh, VCO of the PLL. So, when the input is a square wave of 5 volt amplitude and VCO output is a square wave of 10 volt amplitude the only difference is KPD into pi by 2 which has to be recalculated now because it is a linear phase detector. So, K P D into pi by 2 in this case is nothing but ok 10 into 5 this 10 volts is the uh, VCO output 5 volts is the uh, input to the PLL square wave input and this is corresponding to the multiplier voltage 
10 volts reference voltage. So, this is kpd into pi by 2 that is because we had seen that earlier once we linearize the phase detector right this corresponds to uh, the slope corresponds to let us say kpd right the kpd into pi uh, this pi by 2 is the peak change in dc voltage on either side of vcq. So, this is nothing but kpd into pi by 2. So, that is the maximum change in dc on either side of vcq and therefore omega naught q should be capable of changing by this into the kvco. So, kpd into pi by 2 into kvco k a being 1 okay, is the lock range which is 500 hertz okay, because kvco is 100 hertz. Okay. So, that uh, multiplied by 5 volts this corresponds to 5 volts. So, this is 5 times 100 which is 500 hertz around 1000 hertz you can see this. So, um, this is the VCO output 10 volts plus minus 10 volts and uh, PLL input is plus minus 5 volts square wave and the uh, what has been done is that the arrangement of another VCO at the input of the PLL to which I am applying identical VCO okay, uh, at the input of the phase lock loop. Okay. So, here the same VCO has put is put and I am applying a VC at that point to uh, change the incoming frequency. So, at that point I have applied a voltage of VC equal to 4 volts to that VCO which is at the input then what happens so the arrangement please understand it this way we have a VCO okay here and this is VC so this is going to change this frequency from omega naught q to omega naught q which is 1000 plus 4 times 100 which is 400 right so 1400 corresponds to the input frequency for vc equal to 4 volts oh this is what is applied to the pll and this same vco is put in the feedback path so that is the macro model that we had used and we have the low pass filter 1k and 1 microfarad okay which is getting connected to the uh, vco input so at this point immediately the uh, output frequency should correspond to 1400 okay and the uh, this should change from the coefficient to 4 volts so, initial coefficient if it is 0 this will go to 4 volts. So, that is what has happened the phase shift is nearly 0 you can see the uh, output and the input they are almost in phase. So, this has come close to the lock range on this side okay. and now the same thing is repeated with Vc equal to minus 3 volts that means it has changed to okay, 700 uh, hertz as the input. So, then the phase shift goes close to you can see 180 degrees. So, phase shift is going close to 180 degrees phase shift is going close to 0. So, we have almost covered the lock range this way right? and thereafter 
okay it is going out of log that is primarily due to the fact that the double the frequency component is still not eliminated. So, the voltage is still varying around the so called 3 volts. So, it is going all the way up to uh, 5 volts and thereafter therefore, it is going out of log. This is happening more at uh, the lower frequency end okay, than at higher frequency end because they had higher frequency the low pass filter filters it better. So, you can see the 2 omega component is smaller in amplitude whereas, at lower frequencies the 2 omega component is larger in amplitude. So, that is restricting the lock range to uh, something close to 700 hertz on this side and close to 1400 hertz on the other side. So, this unfiltered ripple is responsible for restricting the lock ring because once it goes out of lock it has to be recaptured. So, that means you have to come closer. So, that means this system dynamics is not uh, functioning properly. So, it is better to remain in lock range as long as you want to track the change in phase okay, uh, change in frequency that is happening at the input to be followed at the output. So, these are the points that must be borne in mind while designing the system. Okay. So, the lock range has been constrained even though it is a linear phase detector to a value which is less than what is predicted because the actual predicted lock range is 500 hertz on the lower side and all the way up to 1500 on the other side. So, it is restricted by the ripple that is not yet completely removed by the low pass filter. So, this is the dynamics of the uh, phase lock loop as an FM detector or FSK detector the entire dynamic characteristic of the phase lock loop is uh, tested. Okay. In fact, if input frequency of the phase lock loop is remaining constant at a value. So, it is changing in steps let us say then what it means is you are testing the static characteristic of the PLL. It is only when the frequency of the input is changing at a frequency it is that frequency that comes as S equal to j omega. Okay then only the dynamics of the phase lock loop is getting tested. So, that is why in order to test the dynamics of the phase lock loop the actual input that must be applied is a FM or an FSK. Right? So, that is what is done we have put the same VCO at the input of the PLL as that is there in the uh, loop and we have made the uh, coefficient frequency of this loop VCO same as that of the input VCO. That means, this is the transmitter okay, which is receiving the modulating frequency and transmitting the carrier here. Then through the media it is received by the receiving antenna and accepted by the PLL which is tuned to the same carrier frequency 1000 hertz as that of the transmitted frequency. So, the frequency deviation is controlled by this control voltage V c. So, if you apply a DC here that is a fixed frequency if you apply an AC at a certain frequency omega m um, then this is V c is replaced by V p sin omega m t that means, this becomes the frequency deviation. What is the frequency deviation? It is 100 times V p in this case. So, the frequency deviation can be controlled. It is going to test the dynamic range. The frequency deviation can be as much as the lock range if only this phase lock loop is tuned such that the uh, coefficient frequency of the phase lock loop corresponds to the carrier then the full dynamic range of the 
PLL is exploited. So, the phase can change from pi by 2 quiescent to pi on this side and 0 on the other side. So, that is important to understand. It is the rate at which it changes depends upon the modulating frequency omega m. So, we have several components to be thought of there is this carrier here plus delta omega d sin omega m t this is the f m that gets produced here. The carrier in this case corresponds to let us say 1000 and 100 times V c means this is the frequency deviation. and this is the modulating frequency. So, there are three frequency component in the incoming frequency component of an FM carrier corresponds to the quiescent voltage of a voltage follower and this corresponds to the input sine wave applied to the voltage follower right. So, in the case of frequency follower this is the amplitude of change of frequency this is the rate of change of frequency omega m ok. So, what should happen is the output frequency is same as input wave that means if this is an f m the same f m gets reproduced here right delta omega d sin omega m t if ok that means this is 1 that is delta phi naught by delta phi is exactly equal to 1 this f m that is reproduced is the same as that f m that is coming here except that if omega uh, not q is same as carrier this will be uh, let us say sin of this and this will be cosine that will be a 90 degree phase shape between that sin and this cosine. Is that point clear? that has to be understood well and change in frequencies will be followed exactly. However, if omega m that is the frequency that test the dynamics of the phase lock loop ok when that is increased when this is increased this change in frequency will not be same or the frequency deviation around the quiescent will not be the same it can actually be more and that is a danger because if it is more right deviating it may go out of the lock range and the system again becomes uh, sort of no use for a linear analysis. So, it has to get captured and come back to the lock range right. So, this is the danger that means the rate at which the frequency is changed here in the f m should be much less than the natural frequency of the system. So, that it is not distorted output is not distorted ok. So, if you apply a step input frequency again the dynamics gets tested because this will start ringing ok at the natural frequency of the system that we have already shown here. So, this is the natural frequency where it is trying to peak ok and now omega m has to be kept much less than the natural frequency of this system. So, this is to be born in order to be free from distortion right. So, this is what is done this is now therefore, the f m detected output. So, because it is reproducing the modulating frequency at this component point exactly in the same fashion. So, if one volt changes uh, the peak here that same one volt change should be there if only omega m is much less than the natural frequency. Okay. That's what is done here. This is uh, the uh, is getting modulated by a sine wave. So you can see that 
this uh, frequency is uh, changing okay, at a certain rate right? and uh, it is frequency modulated. Okay. You can see this phase shift changing okay. uh, at times it is coming close to 0 at times it is going close to pi by uh, pi and then it crosses through pi by 2. So, phase is changing continuously this is the modulating frequency okay. and you can see the uh, FM detected waveform initially it is not tracking once the lock takes place it is going on tracking the change in frequency faithfully with the same magnitude. Of course, you have the 2 omega component triple still unfiltered if one wants one can put a filter with a, a buffer and a filter outside the loop. A buffer is necessary otherwise it will interact with the loop dynamics and it no question of using a second order filter because it will make the system become unstable. The whole system becomes third order and becomes unstable. So, one has to uh, put another filter or better filters outside the loop to uh, remove the 2 omega component completely. So, uh, here VP has been restricted to 1 volt and the same 1 volt uh, is detected at the same frequency of 100 hertz modulating frequency. So, 1000 hertz is the carrier 100 hertz is the FM VP of that FM the modulating frequency is 1 volt. So, that it is well within the lock range when it is swinging. So, VPC the carrier is 5 volts still same as before VPCO of the VCO is 10 volts. These are all sine waves. Okay. So, now FSK detection. In the FSK detection it is a square wave input you can see the blue line the square wave plus minus 1 volt. FM is uh, 2.5 hertz it is still reduced. So, that the rise time and fall time of the square wave is reproduced somewhat faithfully by the FM detector. So, this is still lower earlier we had taken 100 hertz at the modulating sine wave frequency here we have gone for 2.5 hertz as the uh, frequency of uh, FSK. So, the frequency is changed in steps. Okay. So, you have plus 1 taking it to uh, towards uh, uh, 0 and minus 1 taking it towards um, uh, pi for around pi by 2 the quiescent. So, uh, VPC is still uh, 5 volts carrier amplitude VPCO is 10 volts. So, that is maintained and you can see clearly the process of capture and it takes certain capture time as illustrated earlier how the capture, capture time is going to be dependent also on the low pass filter in the dynamics, but it depends upon the whole transfer function as defined by us 1 by 1 plus s by omega naught q plus s squared by omega naught square and q being 1.414 you can see just one peak okay, here this we had seen earlier also please re remember this. So, this is what is seen. So, the same thing is repeated here in FSK. So, this is the reproduction of the uh, pulsed information that is modulating the carrier this is the FM detected output this is the 2 omega component riding over this. Now, we come to the other important uh, application frequency translation which has been earlier discussed however, now we are simulating this using an example omega i is the input omega naught is the output. So, here we get omega i minus omega naught and omega i plus omega naught. 
this being very high this is eliminated by the low pass filter okay within and it responds only to omega i minus omega naught which is the low frequency component and then there is a shift of delta omega and therefore here we cannot decide whether delta omega plus omega i minus omega naught is lower or delta omega minus omega i minus omega naught is the lower frequency component. It can be one of these depending upon whether we want omega naught to be higher or lower than omega i. Okay. So, assuming that it is either this okay, or this, okay, we get an output frequency which is omega i minus delta omega naught or omega naught is equal to omega i plus omega delta omega. So, how this design is done properly is illustrated by an example again. So, here we have chosen 1100 hertz to be derived okay, from 1000 hertz and 100. So, now we want to select 1000 plus 100 and not 1000 minus 100. So, F i is equal to 1000 hertz, V p is equal to 5 volts, delta F is a 100 hertz okay, shift okay, which is applied at the other input with V p equal to 10 volts. So, now what happens is we have tuned this properly. Okay. So, this is the low pass filter output okay this is the unfiltered uh, component at the filter so one can see that the frequency now selected is 1100 hertz how do you select it that means the this particular vco will have to have the uh, what is that uh, the omega not q that is free running frequency properly selected in order to select the right component. Omega not q has to be pretty close to the uh, frequency that we are wanting to select. So, the best way is when it is uh, FSK detection yeah when it is 1100 we want to select uh, we better make the uh, other one that we want to reject is 900 hertz we better make okay, our uh, VC omega naught q equal to 1100 that is the best way. So, if omega naught q is made equal to 1100 or above 1100 maybe 1000 uh, let us say 200 as long as we are sure that the log range is good enough right we can go from anywhere this to this as the free running frequency of the uh, VCO that is incorporated in this loop of frequency translation. So, when that is done we automatically pick the uh, 1100 hertz which you can see here right 1100 hertz emerges as the output this is the input frequency blue is the input frequency which is 1000 hertz and this is 1100 hertz that has been selected by the loop. Another example f i is 1000 hertz still right. So, we want to derive 100 hertz from 1000 hertz using 1000 hertz as one input and 900 hertz as the other input. That means, 1000 minus 900 is what is to be selected not 1000 plus 900. So, that means, it is easy now to make the free running frequency of the VCO close to 100 hertz within the lock range of the uh, VCO uh, and the PLL that is formed okay, using the two multipliers. So, once the VCO is tuned to close to 100 hertz 
let us say we may have made it equal to 100 hertz immediately one can see that it is getting locked you can be sure that it is getting locked because the dynamics is reproduced here that peak of about 1 is still existing right. So, it starts okay, and gets locked okay, and then you can see the output is the 100 hertz okay, that is selected okay, when 1000 hertz is one input and 900 hertz is the other input. That is frequency translation for you. So, this is an important loop in frequency synthesis apart from uh, multiplication. So, that is simple you put a uh, you fake the VCO to act as VCO with a uh, counter okay, which will count down. So, that it is dividing by n. So, divide by m divide by n counters are put that we had illustrated in the last class okay and you can get a, a frequency multiplication by m divided by n that way. So, coupled with frequency translation it becomes a powerful tool for exact frequency synthesis. Speed control of motors nothing but again reproduction of the PLL in terms of electrical components. So, the power drive here running a motor with what I called as optical taco generator which is nothing but uh, the shaft connected with a disc with slits in the circumference and an optocoupler okay, which will convert the whole thing into rotation into a set series of pulses here. So, omega naught output of the oscillator here which is an electrical oscillator is 2 pi into n is the rpm of the motor that by 60 revolutions per second into okay, number of pulses outputted per second which is n number of slits. Okay. So, yeah, every revolution produces n pulses. So, it is a pulse generator right, with this frequency. So, uh, this is the same phase detector loop filter, filter may not be necessary because the power uh, drive itself uh, that is the motor itself acts as a low pass filter. So, this is the speed control of motors AM detection AM comes from the uh, let us say antenna right and goes through a limiter so that the AM is removed here. So, only the carrier is selected here right. So, uh, but several carriers might just appear here. So, this has to be frequency selective now that means, this is uh, one of the ways because both in FM detection and AM detection this PLL acts as a frequency selective device and selects the carrier that is corresponding to omega naught q. Okay. So, if you want a certain carrier to be selected it is necessary to tune this omega naught q and you select the carrier that you want to select okay, uh, at this point as omega naught q. Now, this carrier is reproduced here but only with a phase shift of 90 degrees then if this is therefore, sin omega c t this will be cos omega c t. So, if you multiply cos omega c t with the uh, a m corresponding to that carrier you will still not get any output because of the phase shift of pi by 2. So, there is a phase shifter which is preferably pi by 2 let us say. So, that this becomes the same carrier in phase as the input carrier that is selected. So, when you multiply it by that cos uh, sin if this is sin this also has now become sin. So, you will get again once you multiply uh, sin squared omega c okay, and therefore, there will be the 
double the carrier at this point and the uh, demodulated output or the modulating frequency that is the AM here. So, that gets detected at this point. So, this is a frequency selective or synchronous detection. The carrier is generated by the PLL that is all that happens. So, that requires this kind of arrangement. After that it is nothing but synchronous detection because you have been able to generate the carrier okay, that is carrying the information at the receiving end. That is the thing. So, we have modulated the carrier amplitude modulated the carrier just by using a multiplier at the input. Okay. So, um, this is also going to generate this using a multiplier here and multiplying the carrier with uh, the modulating frequency. Okay. The carrier has to have uh, the modulating frequency has to have a DC. Okay. So, if you Okay, that is the way AM is generated. This is the AM generator. So, one has uh, let us say a DC plus VP sin omega MT and this is the VP C sin omega CT. So, at the output when you multiply you get the carrier plus the uh, component corresponding to omega c plus omega m and omega c minus omega m. So, this therefore is nothing but a m as long as the amplitude of uh, V d c is greater than V p it is going to be uh, giving you a m at the output of this. That a m is applied here and then that is what is detecting. So, that a m comes there and it is going through a limiter and apply to the PLL and the, this is the output of the PLL which just simply generates only the carrier. Okay. So, then this carrier is being used after phase shifting by 90 degree to multiply with the AM at the receiving antenna. So, what happens is if this is the AM okay, uh, that is modulating frequency of the AM and this is the detected AM. This is AM detection. So, IC PLLs are popular IC ones are 565, 560, CD 4046, KVCO sensitivity of one of the most popular uh, PLL LM565 national semiconductor, KVCO is 10 kilohertz okay. at F not equal to 10 kilohertz it is 6600 hertz per volt. So, 6.6 .6 kilohertz per volt. Phase detector sensitivity is 0.38 volts per radians. VCO maximum operating frequency is about 500 kilohertz. So, this is a typical uh, IC PLL that is available. So, we have treated PLL as a control system with the same kind of uh, activity as a uh, an AGC system or an AVC system or a voltage regulator. Okay. So, all these control systems have the same dynamics to be understood. No complicated okay, issues evolved because it is a phase lock loop. Okay. It is same as a voltage follower or a current follower or a phase follower or uh, frequency follower all these have the same dynamics of operation and same ideas of frequency compensations okay, that we have adopted can be uh, adopted for these system designs. Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs>